Hello, I thought I would make a few short videos of the study. I don't know if they'll be short necessarily, but of the study that I did um, on Revelation recently that I mentioned, I was going to type up all the notes for you as I said, but going through the notes I thought I probably need to make more sense of them um, in terms of how to put all the information together. So I wanted to make these videos so that I could just go through it with you and maybe you could have a few short videos where you could just grab your Bible as well and go through what through what I um, discovered, um, thought, thought it might be an idea. So let's pray um, before you get started. If you want, pause the video and go get your Bible and um, yeah, we'll get started. Okay. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for the opportunity to read your word and what you have to say, the information that, and, and knowledge that you have given to us through your word. Please send your Holy Spirit for understanding, for opening up our minds. Heavenly Father, it is a time to really begin to understand what your plan is. Um, the world is little bit upside down at the moment and you are watching and you are carrying out your overall plan and even though it seems so horrible at times and we are seeing lots of ugly things around the world um, we know that you have a big great plan so help us understand that dear God in dear Jesus name we pray amen All right, so my first question was, what is the mark of the beast? So um, as you know, we grew up with a, um, a doctrine on this and what it was um, in my personal journey with God since then, I have discovered that what we were taught is incorrect. So when somebody mentioned the Mark of the Beast to me the other day, it got me thinking and I thought, do they have the right notion of what the Mark of the Beast is? And I thought, well, do I? I've never actually really studied it beyond um, discovering that what we were taught was incorrect. Um, I haven't actually, I hadn't actually delved into what, what it could be. I've had my own ideas, you know, just watching what's going on in the world over the last few years. Um, I've had my own ideas of what it could be, but I wanted to delve into um, God's word first and foremost. So um, let's go to Revelation 13. Now I'll be reading from my favorite translation of the Bible which is um, the complete Jewish Bible. Of course, I'm not Jewish. Um, but it was um, the Bible that God drew me to, for whatever reason, on a friend's bookshelf. And I started reading, reading the Gospels out of that translation. And it's so beautifully simple and conversational and that's what I love about about it and I keep using it to this day all right so let's go to Revelation 13 and let's have a read okay it says and I saw a beast come up out of the sea with ten horns and seven heads. Oh my goodness. On its horns were ten royal crowns and on its heads blasphemous names. The beast which I saw was like a leopard, but with feet like those of a bear, and a mouth like the mouth of a lion. To wit, the dragon gave its power, its throne and great authority. One of the heads of the beast appeared to have received a fatal wound, but its fatal wound was healed, and the whole earth followed after the beast in amazement. 
They worshipped the dragon because he had given his authority to the beast. And they worshipped the beast saying, who is like the beast? Who can fight against it? So I drew a little picture when I was reading it. <laughs> this is my picture. It looks like a leopard. It's got seven heads. I don't know if they're all the same size. It doesn't tell us. It's got huge giant paws like that of a bear. Um, the heads all have horns on them. And the mouth is like a lion's. So it probably has sharp teeth for it to open opens its mouth. So we've got this, um, I love this about the Bible. I love that it uses fantasy <laughs> to describe things to us. It's really exciting. Who needs movies? Okay, so we've got this character, this beast that that's come out of the sea. So I've drawn the sea there. And then we've got this other character and he's a great big dragon. So that's what I drew. <laughs> <laughs> so that's it so um it's probably it, it it is a stretch of the imagination for us to um consider that these might be a real beast that comes out of the ocean you know that's that's not um what we know of revelation to be revelation is symbolic um a lot of the time so um, there are some Christians who believe that the sea in Revelation is representative of crowds or nations. I personally don't actually know where that comes from. Um, I believe strongly that the Bible will reveal itself and I haven't yet to see where that um, conclusion comes from. So if you happen to know the Bible verse or the chapter or whatever, that refers to that, um, please let me know. So this, so the, we've got the, the beast and we've got the dragon. We've got the dragon gives, the dragon gives the beast power and authority, which alludes to the fact that the dragon is kind of like the beast's master, right? Like, so the dragon actually has the power and authority to give the power and, power and authority to this beast, whatever it is. It's got seven heads. And one of them was wounded. So let's, um, now, if we look at, if we think about heads, the symbolism of heads in the Bible, and even in society, I guess, but and crowns, but Specifically in the Bible, back in the book of Daniel, when King Nebuchadnezzar built a big giant statue, the head was made of gold, and Daniel when was called to explain to the king what this statue was. I mean, I'm talking about the dream that King Nebuchadnezzar had of this big giant statue. And the head was gold, made of gold. And so Daniel says to King Nebuchadnezzar, the king actually represents you and your kingdom. And it's like your kingdom is going to be the strongest kingdom like ever. Like the rest of the kingdom, kingdoms are not going to be anywhere near as strong as you are right now. This, the power of your kingdom we won't really see again. So um, the fact that this beast has seven heads um, makes me think that these are seven powers or seven kingdoms in the world and it's blasphemous so blasphemy is something that goes against god so if we thought of kingdoms in this world we're talking possibly royalty possibly presidents possibly um churches even you know like um, if they become powerful enough, um, it really can be anything, any power. Um, but the important thing is that to, to recognize that these, these powers and kingdoms are blasphemous. So they don't actually, 
praise God in any way, they try to destroy who God is. Okie dokie. So, let's continue on to verse 5. It was given a mouth speaking arrogant blasphemy. So, we are now talking about the beast, specifically about the beast. People are praising it, going, wow, who is this beast? Who can fight against it? They're like in awe of this beast, whatever it is, and or whoever it is. And it says, it, this beast, was given a mouth speaking arrogant blasphemies and it was given authority to act for 42 months. So 42 months is about three and a half years. So it opened its mouth in blasphemies against God to insult his name and his glory and those living in heaven. It was allowed to make war on God's holy people and to defeat them. And it was given authority over every tribe, people, language and nation. So now we see this beast with seven heads, um, these seven powers that obviously are acting in unison, right? Because they've all got, they've got the same body and this whole beast has been given authority from the dragon. So they're all acting in unison. They're all blaspheming against God. They're very arrogant. Um, they suddenly turn against God's people. So that is any of us who love God and follow him and have a relationship with him, um, who those of us who stand by um, Jesus, the Messiah, so we call ourselves Christians, we carry on his name, right? So these, this beast gets angry at God and his people because that's just what happens, isn't it? If we get angry at someone, humans, we are human and we tend to then get angry at everyone that's related to that person, you know. We think that we should be angry at everyone. So that's that's kind of what's happening now. The beast is like, rah, I, I'm against God and therefore I'm against his people too. Now, the interesting thing here is, is that it's, it's, he's given authority over every tribe, people, language, and nation. It doesn't say some of the tribes and peoples and nations of the world. It doesn't, and, and, and the Bible does actually make that distinction in other parts. Like in other parts of Revelation, it will specifically talk about, and a third of the world was destroyed, or a third of mankind was destroyed, or a third of... Um, of the trees and, and, and the fish in the sea, you know, like it, it can, the Bible does use numbers. In this particular case, it's not using numbers. It's saying it was given authority over every tribe, people, language, and nation. So it says over every tribe, people, language, and nation. So now when we stop and think about that, we've got 7 billion people in this world, seven continents, several prime ministers, presidents, and kings and queens, and we're talking every tribe and people, language, and nation now has one authority over them, and it's this beast with seven heads, right? So that very much alludes to a one-world power, a one-world government, or a one-world whatever, these words that we've been hearing for years from the 1990s or earlier, this, you know, there's been this push for a one world government for many, many years, um, many years. I grew up hearing about this um, and and it's actually in the Bible, like the, the leaders of the world are going, yeah, yeah, we need to come together and, you know, there's talk of te technocracy and there's talk of the Great Reset and there's talk of... Um, this thing and I, I bet even they don't realize that God told us about this years and years and years ago okay let's go on to verse 8 everyone living on earth will worship it except those whose names are written in the book of life belonging to the lamb slaughtered before the world was founded 
So let's chat about that. Again, it says everyone living on earth. It doesn't say a third of the world or anything. Um, it says everyone living on earth will worship it. So now we look at this beast that has seven heads. We've worked out it's some kind of power, earthly power. It can be, like I said, we, we know of the power of our powers here on earth as um, our leaders, as prime ministers or presidents or um, even, you know, honestly, even Hollywood has become a, an authority of sorts over the last 10 years, I reckon. Like Hollywood used to be like a, a fashion trend that we used to follow, like a fashion thing. It was like so much fun to find out what celebrities were up to. Um, they were like a whole other and it was amazing. And then I think social media has changed that for us. Um, because it's brought celebrities and regular people on the same platform. And even though we're on equal standing somewhat, because we all get to share whatever we would like through social media, including celebrities, we'd like to think. I think they still have managers that tell them what to say. But, but um, I've noticed a trend where celebrities are called upon to push certain things um so for example we're experiencing covid in the world at the moment and um i noticed when it all broke out that several celebrities were um trying to encourage people to to be careful and to um to do what you have to do to to keep to keep the virus from you know um spreading too much and I found that was really interesting because I thought, well, um, this is this is actually a, a medical health and medical thing happening. Like, why why are celebrities standing up? Um, but we're also going through a period of time at the moment where um, I think everyone in the world is feeling great a great need a great necessity they have this necessity this need to stand up for for what's right you know um what's right out in the world can be a bit questionable but i think everyone's hearts are in the right place you know people is you know there's the black lives matter and there's the equal rights and there's the save the environment and, and these are all good things um and so everyone's speaking up everyone is speaking up at the moment but we've still got obviously leaders um in the world that are um trying <laughs> all right so it says, so back to verse 8, everyone living on earth will worship it. So worship this beast. So whatever this, these powers are, um, whatever these, these leaders or kingdoms are in this world. So everyone living on earth will worship this, this beast, which is like, it seems to be a conglomerate of leaders except those whose names are written in the book of life belonging to the lamb slaughtered before the world was founded so we know the lamb is jesus um, and it says that the lamb was slaughtered before the world was founded so what that means obviously jesus was on earth only about two thousand years ago that wasn't before the world so what that means is that this was a a big plan that was set in motion even before the world was created god had it in mind to 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 save us to like protect us to bring us back to him that's always and that's where we see the heart of him that's where we really see his heart because all he wants all god has ever wanted is to have us with him and to have us close and to just almost just hold us and cuddle us that's all he wants um a lot of people will say well he's if he, he's well he's god like why he could just do this and 
make us make the world right again. But that's the thing about him. He is, um, he's not going to force anyone. That's not, that would go completely against every grain of his being. Like, it's like, he, he doesn't force everyone. He could. He could just send fire down on earth and, and be done and maybe start again even. But he's, he's not, um, he's attempted that once before. He's not going to do that again. And he said so. And we can hold true to his promise. So he's not out to destroy us. And he wants to give everybody on earth a chance to get to know him. Um, to come through the the um, the darkness and to see to see him to see to see the truth. So, um, why are those people whose names are written in the book of life not worshiping the beast? Like you know, I can already hear people saying, "All you have to do is sign that document." saying that you're going to commit to the new world order. Like, what's the big deal? Just do it. It's going to save you from this. So it's going to, it's going to keep you in business or it's going to keep you, um, it's going to let you keep your home or like anything like this. I can just kind of hear it because I hear, I hear it all the time. It's like, um, people will go, what's the big deal? Just, just do this. Like, um, and so, there will be people come that time that go, what's the big deal? Just sign the document. What's the big deal? Just just raise your hand to that power that is visiting Australia at the moment. Like, you know, it's going to be, there's going to be people who aren't going to see. Um, but the people whose names are in the book of life and those, by the way, are those of us who carry his name because his name is the seal. It's not the Sabbath. It's not a holy day. It's his name is the seal. So those written in the book of life are those who love God and follow Jesus Christ. And they won't be worshipping this beast. They won't be paying allegiance to this power, to this leader, because they're going to be like, hang on, we don't worship the leaders of this world that's that's just not what we're called to do we're called to worship god he is our creator he is our heavenly father we, we just we just cannot we, we we can't pay allegiance to this leader we just we just can't it's it's it will it would just no it, it's gonna go against us because it's like is we, we 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 won't be able to do it so that's why the Christians aren't worshipping this beast. Let's go to verse 9. It says, Those who have ears, let them hear. If anyone is meant for captivity, into captivity he goes. If anyone is to be killed with the sword, with the sword he is to be killed. This is when God's holy people must persevere and trust. So, We've just finished reading about the people who are in the book of life. And um, so it's, we can pretty much conclude that the next verse about people going into captivity or people being killed with a sword is talking about those people in the book of life that are not worshipping the beast. So... That's when um, the, the power starts going against God's people and starts throwing them in jail and throw it and, and um, killing them. Um, because if you're going to be a, a beastly power that wants to be worshipped and somebody doesn't do it, it's only natural you're going to get pretty angry. And you're going to go around throwing people in jail and wanting to kill them. So, um, yes. So, so we know so far who, what the beast is. We can gather what the beast is. And the beast is being given authority by the dragon. 
Um, the dragon isn't, of course, a dragon. We're going to see. We know that dragon is Satan. So he, um, and that is actually revealed in Revelation, word for word, um, elsewhere, that, that that is who he is. Um, here we go. Revelation 20. It says he seized the dragon. So Revelation 20, verse 2. He says he seized the dragon, that ancient serpent, who is the devil and Satan, the adversary, and chained him up for a thousand years. So later on, we know perfectly who this dragon is. The dragon gives power to beast. The dragon is Satan. The beast is seven powers in this world of some kind who are ruling the whole world at that point. So we'll leave it at that. This has gone on for ages, I'm so sorry. Um, but also a good bit of reading there. So um, I hope that um, you enjoy this and that we can keep, I can keep going through this with you. Okay, bye.